Hi YouTube. It's been a really long time since I made a video. I fell off the wagon when I went on vacation last year and when I came back from my vacation I just never got back to creating YouTube content. I'm basically doing a video on my seed inventory. I'm going to show you some of the new seeds that I acquired from Baker Creek and from MI Gardener. Those are the two companies that I generally buy seeds from. I have However, I have picked up seeds from, you know, Home Depot, Walmart, those kinds of places. So I will show you some of those as well as the dollar store. Um, part of the reason I'm making the video at this time is because I think this is a great time to buy seeds. I just came back from Home Depot and Home Depot has already put out their seeds. So um, a lot of the stores are going to be starting to do that soon. And I know that the Dollar Tree I went to had some of their um, seed starting stuff out and um, not all the seeds were out yet, but they're starting to put out pots and all sorts of things for people who want to start seeds. So I just figured it would be a good time to talk about just basic uh, information about seeds and also talk about, and like I said, also show you about, also show you my seed collection and how I store it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is getting seeds that you know that are inexpensive and as I'm going to show you some from Walmart that I picked up and a lot of them are only for 50 cents so I just kind of want to go over the choices that you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money a lot of the seed packets at Home Depot are two three dollars but there are options for spending less and one of them is the Dollar Tree the Dollar Tree sells at least last year they were selling all their packs for a dollar four for a dollar so this year there might be four for a dollar twenty five I'm not quite sure what to expect um, but last year anyway they were four for a dollar and I kind of wanted to sh go over like seeds that would be a great buy from the Dollar Tree and then seeds that maybe wouldn't be a great buy. So to me, something that would be a great buy are things that you grow one, you know, you grow one seed and you get a plant that gives you a bunch of that item. Like a tomato, for example, is a good example. Um, a tomato is a good example because you plant one tomato plant, you don't get one tomato, you get 10 tomatoes, 15 tomatoes, how many of the tomatoes you get in a plant. But something like, a turnip you plant one seed you get one turnip so you have to kind of think about that when you're buying seeds because something at the dollar store they might only have you know they might only have 10 seeds in a pack and so if you're trying to grow a turnip you're only going to get 10 turnip if you're trying to grow turnips you're only going to get 10 turnips but if you're growing something like maybe celery you don't want a hundred things of celery you only want maybe three or four or five or how many ever how much ever celery you want so those are things to consider is is it a seed that produces something that gives you a lot of it or is it produce one item so something to me that would be really a good thing to pick up at the dollar tree would be herbs because you're not planting 50 rosemary plants or 50 um, basil plants you're produce you know planting maybe one maybe two and that's it and another thing to keep in mind is some of these plants are um, perennials. So they actually will come back year after year. So like rosemary is one of those. And rosemary can be hard to start, but if you get it growing, it will come back year after year if you are in a warmer climate. And I'm in zone 6B, 7A. Like every time I look it up, it says different things. So in that zone, I can grow rosemary as a perennial unless it gets really really cold and it can be killed off but a lot of herbs like thyme will come back chives will come back at least in my um, usda zone so that is another thing to keep in mind is that you buy the seed one time you're probably not going to need those seeds again so that's a good example of something to buy at the dollar tree the other way to get inexpensive seeds is to really like go to seed swaps. A lot of communities, at least in my area, in January they're starting, if you look up gardening groups or master gardener groups, you can find seed swaps or even find a Facebook page where people are swapping seeds. Um, that's another way of getting seeds for basically free or for next to nothing. At least the seed swap that's in my area, you don't even have to bring any seeds. You can come without seeds and they will give you seeds. So that's another option. Another option is to really ask anybody that you know that does gardening, because as I mentioned, if they bought a pack of tomato seeds and it had like 30 seeds in it or 40 seeds in it, they don't need all 40 seeds. They probably have some left over that they can share with you. Um, eventually you can get into saving your seeds, but if you're just starting out, this is a great way of getting seeds. So asking people for 
like you would obviously ask them for turnip seeds because as I mentioned, one turnip will grow from one seed so they can't share their turnip seeds with you, but they can share herbs and things that generally will grow, grow in a plant and then you can you know, get multiples on one plant. The last thing that I wanted to mention about seeds is especially if you are getting it from other people that are giving it to you, do not be put off by their expiration. Sorry about the noise in the background. My dog is um, stretching and making all sorts of funny noises. Um, another thing to remember is to not be put off by the expiration dates on seeds. Apparently, I think it's the USDA, I'm not sure who actually requires it, but they require seed sellers to not sell seeds that are like the seeds from 2022 cannot be sold in 2023. So a lot of companies will have a big sale at the end of 2022 and get rid of their seeds. But a lot of people are thinking, oh, the seeds are expired because they have an expiration date on them. But that only affects germination rates. So basically the older a seed gets, it can impact its germination rate. So maybe a seed when it first started out had a germination rate of like 80%, like 80% of the seeds. If you plant 10, you'll get eight. Um, is the germination rate but if it's you know four years old five years old it might move to like 50 percent or 40 percent i actually had a friend of mine give me seeds that were some of them were close to 20 years old and some of the lettuce seeds still sprouted a lot of the seeds still sprouted so it's not you know you're not you don't need to be worried if they're giving you old seeds because what do you have to go what do you have to lose you have nothing to lose you basically plant those seeds and see what happens you might not get 100 percent germination but at least you'll get something. And as I mentioned, you don't need 50 tomato plants, or maybe you do, but most people don't need 50 tomato plants. So the uh, next thing I'm gonna do is share my seeds that I bought from Baker Creek, um, my favorite ones from Baker Creek, and then I'm also going to share my um, seeds that I got from MI Gardener. And then I'll just go over some of the seeds that I'm planting in the coming year. First thing I wanna show you is the boxes that I use to store my seeds in. I'm basically just using old shoe boxes. That, these are the like ones you can buy at the dollar store. And I put like little dividers in them. You can see it's just a piece of paper, like a cardboard. And I have put those in there just to separate different varieties of seeds. Oops. I put, if you can see in here, I put like little cardboard type Stiff, stiffer uh, paper in there. It's just to make dividers in the box so I can just put more in there, but you can organize them however you want inside there. But I keep all of these in the box and then I keep them in my closet because seeds are supposed to be stored in a dry place. So I basically just stick them in my closet on the floor and that's where I keep them. So I have three boxes of these. I have two that are, are store-bought and then I'll show you the last one first which is my collection of seeds that I have collected. And so there are, some of these are not labeled, but I, I know what they are. Like these are marigold seeds. Um, but a lot of these are seeds that I have collected from my own plants. This is um, ground cherry and also crazy, it's called berries, crazy cherry tomatoes. I've um, collected these from my own tomato plants and just saved them so that I don't have to keep buying them. I've also had neighbors give me seeds. I have some bean seeds that my neighbor gave me. Um, just lots of, lots of different um, garlic chives is another one that I grow and they're perennials that keep coming back. So I basically save a lot of these seeds. Sometimes I share these seeds. Another reason I've been collecting some of these because I would like to attend a seed swap. I've actually not been to a seed swap. I know my community has one, but because of COVID, they hadn't had one for the last couple years. But now things are starting to open back up. So I'm hoping that there will be another seed swap and I'm possibly going to attend it though. I do have quite a collection of seeds and not that much space. So I'm just gonna go over my favorite um, Baker Creek seeds first. Maybe not my favorite, but maybe this is all the ones that I've, uh, that I've purchased from Baker Creek that I really like. And I'm a huge fan of Baker Creek. Unfortunately, I was driving cross country back in April and I went near the Baker Creek store, but it was close to the time that they were closing and I was really exhausted from driving. So I kind of regret not going there, but I didn't end up seeing their location, which I would have loved to do. Same thing with MI Gardener. I would love to go to MI Gardener's location, and I haven't done that either. They're on my bucket list of places that I like to go see. 
One thing that I do not do a lot of is plant flowers. In the front of my house, I do have a flower garden mixed actually with herbs. I have herbs growing in amongst my flowers because I just wanted to use up that space and not just have it filled with flowers. And people can't tell from the street. Like my house is set back far enough that they can't tell if it's vegetables I'm growing or herbs I'm growing. So it generally just looks like flowers. Um, so I do grow some herbs mixed in my front beds. I don't have any herbs in the back. So, but first is an example actually of flowers that I have bought from Baker Creek. And this is called um, Love in the Mist. I actually really like this. Um, this is a seed that I wanted because in our first home we ever owned, we had planted Love in the Mist and it was just a plant that, it was just a flower that I really wanted to, it was more sentimental than anything else. And it was really hard to find seeds for it. So I found them at Baker Creek and I've never had a problem with germination for any of their stuff. It's really nice. And these flowers are very good and they actually do produce seeds. Um, the next one is one of my favorite squashes. It's called a, now I might be pronouncing this wrong, but I pronounce it a Kusha squash. Um, I've heard that it's more common in the South, that it's more of like a Southern squash, but it grows really big. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, but it's quite big. So um, it's a nice size squash and it's beautiful. Like with the stripes in it, the, the green and the white, it's just a beautiful squash. And like I said, it grows. It's not a very good keeper, but it will keep for a while, but it doesn't keep as well as like maybe butternut squash. The next um, packet of seeds is something I've just bought for this year and I'm excited to try. It's called the North Georgia, it's called the North Georgia Candy Roaster. I have never tried this um, squash before, but I've watched a lot of videos on it and seen that it's really nice and so I'm excited to give it a try. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I've heard that they can grow to a nice size and that they taste really good. So this is my first year trying them. My next is another squash. If you notice a pattern with squash, I do like squash a lot. So you might see a lot of squash. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this, or maybe I will. It's Zucchino Rampicante or something like that. I've heard that these are very resistant to vine borers and that's part of the reason that I purchased this. So I'm excited to give it a try and see what happens. But this is another one that's new for me this year. And next, another one that I um, just purchased for this year is a global onion. I love growing onions. I just, I don't know why. I think it's just amazing to watch them bulb up. And um, I didn't have much luck with them because I was trying a lot of times to grow them from uh, the sets that you can buy, which look like little baby onions. But now that I've started growing them from plants, I'd have better luck. I have also ordered from Dixondale Farms. They're another resource for onion plants and I love them. But I'm trying to save money this year. So I figured I would give this onion a try and then maybe save its seed also for future years but this is definitely on my list of onions. And onions get started pretty early, so I'm excited to give it a try. The next one, it says on here that it says Chinese broccoli, but I've also heard it called broccoli rob. So it's just like, I guess, like miniature little broccoli stems. I did try planting it last year, and I will tell you I didn't have much luck, but I think that they don't like warm weather and maybe the weather was turning warm so I'm gonna give it another shot. I try plants over and over again just to see you know is it me or you know maybe I just planted them at the wrong time. I have heard good things about this carrot it's called the new Corota carrot. I actually heard this on um, heard about this carrot from the Deep South Homestead um, YouTube channel. I watched them and so they talked about this carrot and I planted them last year for the first time and I'm having good luck with them. I am not a good carrot planter. I have a hard time getting them to sprout, but they're finally working for me now. And I finally have learned from watching enough videos on how to sprout, you know, plant them and get them to sprout. The last is um, some free seeds they sent me. They, if you order enough, I think it's like $10 worth of seeds, they will send you a free seed packet. So this was my free seed packet, which I've never tried. The last two packets are just a Buttercrunch salad, um, I mean, buttercrunch lettuce 
seeds and these were also free for me like i said i ordered enough seeds and they sent me a free seed packet so i love i actually do love this lettuce i think it's really good um i've tried growing it and i do have some seeds of it still left so i will probably grow this again and then the last seed that i have from baker creek is actually one that i was sent also for free and this is uh, russian kale i didn't have a whole lot of luck with it it did grow but it wasn't very super productive but like I said, I usually try plants a couple of times because I think sometimes maybe it's timing. Sometimes, you know, I'll try a different box because I grow in raised boxes, um, raised beds, I mean. And so I try them again and again. And sometimes they get it, you know, I get it to work. I try different techniques. So that was all my, that was all my Baker Creek uh, seed collection. I'm going to show you a couple of the new ones that I got from and my gardener this year but first i want to show you some seeds that i picked up at walmart that i think are a good price and that you should look out for this year these are two brands that i found at walmart that are even cheaper than just their regular um i think their regular seeds i think most of their regular seeds are by burpee but i found these other brands and so this is one brand that i found and these were 50 cents last year like i said i don't know what they'll be this year but um these were 50 cents last year so i think this is a really good price for these and you get a good amount in here and this is like i mentioned these are beets so you got one beet for one seed um these are just a couple other ones this was like a black radish sugar baby watermelons which i love i don't have much luck at growing watermelons but i keep trying and then this turtle bean which I just picked up because it was 50 cents and I said, let me try growing some. I do try to like to try things, new varieties or um, just different types of vegetables that I've never grown before. This is another brand that Walmart sells and these are also 50 cents. So this is a good example of a seed that you don't really need $2 worth of seeds. This 50 cent packet, you're gonna grow like two or three squash plants most likely. Unless you have a lot of gardening space, then I guess you could plant a whole lot more, but you would use these seeds and you'd get a good amount of um, squash plants from it. I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the seeds that I got from MI Gardener this year and some of my favorite MI Gardener seeds, which is where I buy the bulk of my seeds. The first one is this black nebula carrot. Like I mentioned, I did not have luck with carrots before, but now I've gotten better about it and I've figured out how to grow them and I can generally get them to sprout. Maybe not as good a germination rate as maybe someone else, but I'm getting them to sprout. This is one I found. Um, I did not get this to grow last year, but I also did not do as good a garden last year because I was on vacation and then when I came back, it just seem too late to start a lot of these plants but this is one that i really want to grow i've heard it can be very productive so i'm excited to give it a try again this year this is one i have never had any luck with but i really want to grow because i've heard it's good but i cannot get this thing to say to grow to save my life but i'm going to try it again it's a sweet meat squash and i've heard good things about it as i mentioned before you'll see a lot of squash this is butternut squash and I'm excited to try these. This is a generic, normal type of butternut, but I wanted to buy it for my gardener. And this is some bell peppers. I absolutely love bell peppers. I'm not into spicy food, but I love using bell peppers for like pepper steak or um, stuffed bell peppers. So I like to grow some. This last year, I did have some luck with growing. Not a tremendous amount, but I also didn't plant a whole lot of them. They're oriental yard long beans. So I'm gonna plant them again. And these are peas, which I plant every year. Um, I think you need a lot of them to make a substantial amount to, if you wanna save some or you know freeze them, because they don't seem to grow a lot. Of, you know, I think I feel like I need a lot more plants, but I still grow them. I feel like these taste like candy. I tell my son that it literally just tastes like candy to me. It's nothing like buying stuff at the grocery store. And that's one thing I want to mention about growing your own vegetables. You will notice that the stuff just tastes so much better than the stuff that's at the store. They only grow a couple of varieties. They just grow what's more productive. So you don't get to try other varieties. And that's like a huge benefit of growing your own 
vegetables is because you can try so many varieties and see which one you'd like the taste, what works for you in your yard. And so this is a really good thing about, you know, growing your own vegetables. And this is rutabaga, which I grew for the first time last year, and I'm excited to grow them again this year. And this is beets, and I absolutely love beets. I'm a huge fan of pickle beets, so I try to grow these every year. And I do have luck with these, so. And leeks are another one that I grew for the first time last year. I have never successfully grown leeks. I started them from seeds, and they grew to be a nice sized leek, and I actually harvested them and dehydrated them all and kept them, and I'm just putting them in I like soups and other recipes as I use them. And this is the, I think the simplest uh, vegetable and everyone should start with this, is radish. Um, it's the easiest thing you can sprout. I mean, it's the easiest thing to grow and it's so fast. Like within a month, you usually have a radish. So I think it's like instant gratification as far as gardening goes. So I do grow radish every year and I like to bake them, uh, roast them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper and they taste really good. Or I can just eat them raw too. And the last one is something I like to grow. It's called a daikon radish. Um, this is commonly not sold at you know normal American grocery stores, but it is sold at Asian stores, and I absolutely love daikon radish. So it's one that I also grow because it tends to be expensive at the Asian store, or more expensive now that everything's getting expensive. So as I mentioned, I have quite a seed collection and I couldn't even go through all of those seeds, we'd be here forever. But I just wanted to go over some of my favorite seeds, some of the things that I'm gonna be growing and some of the things that I purchased recently. As I mentioned, you don't need to go out and spend a whole lot of money to buy these seeds. There are alternatives to get seeds that are cheaper and it's, it's, it's not like that you have, you don't have to go out and spend a fortune to have a vegetable garden. The last thing I want to show you was this container. And these are what I buy at the dollar store. So there would be a dollar twenty-five. Just make sure that they're ones that have a flat bottom, because some of them have like a raised bottom inside also, and you don't want those. So I buy the ones with a flat bottom. And then I buy these. Actually, I got these last year from Amazon. I forgot how much they were, but they were like six dollars for a pack of like 10 or something and then I reuse them every year but I basically put this inside the pot and then I put, put potting mix I buy usually jiffy potting mix put it in here and then plant all my seeds in here and then I do what's called bottom watering which is I put the water in the pot rather than like on the plant itself so that's kind of what I use um, to start my seeds. I do have some grow lights, but they're just lights that I picked up at um, Walmart, not, not specific. No, I don't buy the ones that are specific grow lights. I think they're a waste of money and way more expensive than you need. I bought my lights for like $15 and I bought LED lights and I just hang them. I have like a metal rack and I will show you my seed starting when I get started on it, but um, I just hang the grow lights and then have these pots underneath. I mean, have these um, trays underneath and I don't use any kind of heat pad or anything and I grow them in my basement. I don't live in a very warm climate, so these get started in my basement and they do just fine. And I will be starting my onion seeds because that's the ones I start first, and then I'll move on to other things. But I just kind of wanted to um, share this video so you can get out there now because especially the Dollar Tree, their seeds sell out pretty quickly. Ever since the pandemic began, people have really gotten into gardening and a lot of times their seeds sell out pretty quickly, especially if you wanna choose you know, the ones you want. So I would suggest that probably within the month of January that you get out there and look at the seeds that are being sold at the Dollar Tree, really probably the earlier part of January. And then you can always find seeds at Walmart later on too, but I would suggest that you go out there and find these seeds and start planting and, and one, I think it's a, a fun hobby. I personally enjoy uh, growing vegetables and I too think that it's a hobby that partially pays me back. Maybe I spend more on gardening than I get back, which I've never done the math on it. And a lot of the stuff is now stuff that I already paid for, so I'm getting to use it over and over again. Um, so I really don't think that I'm spending more on growing vegetables than I'm getting back, but I love the satisfaction of growing my own food, not putting any chemicals on it and just, the joy of going out there and be able, being able to pick from my yard and bring it inside and cook it. So I get a lot of satisfaction for that. I hope this video is helpful and that you got some good information. If you enjoyed my video, I would ask that you please give it a thumbs up. 
and subscribe to my channel and I'll be putting out more videos on gardening and also just living a frugal life. Thank you very much.